So what do I have for you today? A hot point, a little spinner. Look at this. It's up on the bench, very high up. It's been painted at some point in time with a brush. I have a feeling it is pre-1980. That's just my assessment of it. I have a feeling it was painted to match the kitchen. I have a feeling it was white enamel beneath. I was given it because over here, I went to buy this machine, which is a Hot Point Empress. And I paid for that and I paid for the service tumble dryer. That's 1960-ish, that's 1980. That's why I'm basing this as being in between. This spinner is, if this will focus, a Hot Point, was it a Hot Point or a Whirlpool? It's a hot point, 10, 12, when numbers were numbers. 300 watts, I don't know what that number four there means. Two to 300 watts, 200 to 240 volts, 50 cycles. 13 amp fuse, single phase, British Domestic Appliances Limited, Peterborough. It has a layer of dust, which I wanted to leave in situ until I made the video. It has an old plug, no brand name apparently, but solid brass pins, no shielding on them. Little plug slot there, uh, designed to be put away, so it's on casters. And the immediate thing, the immediate thing that's wrong with it is that this hose is completely perished. It has some flexibility left in it, but when I just kinked it there, look, it's uh, cracking up there. So it's cracked here. I try and bend it back. Yeah, it'll just snap off in my hand. I don't mind doing that because there's no saving it. I'm gonna to have to put a new hose on it if I want it to work, or I could use it outside maybe. That's where it's really damaged. So I'll take that away too. I need to find a hose that'll go on in here and attach to it. So I think I need to take off this screw and this screw. Maybe not. Maybe I can get away with just taking off these pairs, six of them down along, one in the center. I'll give it a dose of the vacuum cleaner first to get that dust off it. It was sat under a kitchen draining board for probably 20 years without being moved or being, being cleaned leastways. No harm, it's in good condition internally and uh, we'll take a look at it now. We'll get the back off it and clean it up. Old school. So this machine belonged to a fellow. Wow, well, they're on. They're on, all right. It was in his family. I presume they bought it new. In the north of England. He didn't have the manual for this. He had the manual for the other two appliances. It was in his kitchen. It had been there for years. I guess it was a compliment to the ringer and the tumble dryer. That's a longer screw there at the bottom. I have a feeling this is going to be painted shut because all the screws are painted shut. I'm going in here because I want to get it going. I think this could be quite a useful thing. At the moment I am washing nappies in a machine with an 800 spin or 900 spin, but it only spins them at 800 because of the cycle that we put it on. Now, it's not going to come out without this top bit coming out, I don't think. So to be able to spin them a bit further would be good. I've been doing it in the WFP. And the WFP is good. But it's a 12 minute cycle. And I think if I did it in this, it could be a shorter cycle. Look at that. That screw has a little plastic button on the top. And I think that's to stop it if you're putting it in against a wall to stop it scraping behind. I don't know that for sure. But uh, that's what I think. Oh, it's all... Is it one piece? It's actually all one piece. Okay. Let's just unwire this so that I can take it off completely. Bit of damage to the flex. Covered in tape. Now... No, it doesn't bode well. Let's uh, 
let's take a look at this. So up on top, we've got a timer mechanism. We've got a door latch mechanism, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, there's a there's a little micro switch. That red thing's a micro switch, and there's just a tiny amount of positive pressure there, and a Bowden cable as well, which I presume controls something else down below. There's a Bowden cable in there. Micro switch. Uh, there's a timer here. It's earthed. It's got a little shield here, and I presume that that's some kind of radio interference suppressor deal. Cable comes in here, mains comes in, solid uh, wired with screws, block connector here. And I don't know where it goes from there. I think it goes up to the timer. Can't tell, but it doesn't really matter. The timer does. I know it only does one thing, so there must be a pump on the whole time. It has a rinse function, which I'm not entirely sure about, but it doesn't matter yet. There is a the motor. I wonder if that Bowden cable, there's, I can see a brake if we get in here. This band here looks to be a brake. This band here looks to be a brake on the machine. And this is the pump hose and that might leak. I'm not entirely confident in that. It's got, it looks perished. Best thing to do, there's some kind of an insect crawling along here. That little fellow. I don't know. Um, best thing to do, I think, is to. Well, I don't know. We need to fix this hose, I guess. Do we? It looks like I can get to that from below, so I'll lean it over and we'll have a look below. then rather interesting that rubber is quite perished round belts so not a big deal to fix that belt is slipping but I don't know if that's an issue I wonder does that have a I think is this a variable speed V belt I can't tell so it looks like the motor is here and it's driving this spinner And that's a massive flywheel that weighs a couple of kilos on its own. And there's another block of metal above it. Heavy. There's casters. Two sets of casters, nothing special. This belt here looks to be about four mil uh, round rubber driving a pump. It's slipping there on the shaft. But uh, let's try and get this off up here. It looks to be quite an old style pump especially if it's driven mechanically ah, there we go so this is a little it's not a jubilee clip but it's a little hose clip of sorts plenty of play on it let's see down that's good now can i get this off without wrecking everything the issue with old rubber is it perishes really badly and then it's both hard when it should be soft and whatnot. I'm going to vacuum this out first. So then, how can I prise off this hose? That's the question now. It's... It's, um... Probably easier to destroy it, in fact. Sad but true. Now I don't think having a piece of the old holes, the remaining pieces that would that would do it. If I was to, you know, make use it as a shorter hose, I think by the looks of things it's slightly shorter, smaller than a Standard modern washing machine hose. That makes everything a little bit trickier.
can't really see what I'm working on here. So. Okay, I've got it coming out the top here. That's it. There's a grommet there. There's a grommet, uh, like an electrical installation grommet where it passes through the box, but that doesn't look to have been in correctly either because of the way it's settled. And so I just need to find a hose that'll go on there. And any old hose, like a bit of braided modern hose would do it. It doesn't have to be this kind of old washing machine rubber. I'll go in and see what I've got. A washing machine hose might fit if it's clamped down. So here is the remnant of what just came out. I've pieced it together. And it is actually very close, if not identical, to a waste hose. Uh, this one's out of a Bosch washing machine. And in fact, it's not far off being perished either. It's got to be 20, 25 years old. I wonder if I take that clip off it. I wonder if I could feed it through. It won't fit through that hole as it happens. So where does that leave me? Could I bring it out a different way? If I bring it in, if I bring it in above, a bit of washing up liquid here. No, it's not going to one way or the other. So I have to bring it, if I bring it in from below, in fact. That doesn't make sense, does it? If I bring it in from below and then run it without the back on, Needs a bit of lubrication, maybe. A bit of something there to help it along. I think all the edges on this device are not... not smooth. Perhaps a pair of gloves would be an idea. It's not exactly space to work in here. I might need a cup of hot water to heat this up a bit. It is quite flexible though. What am I struggling with? That's all welded together, so I can't take it apart. This plate on the bottom holds the motor, so I can't really do much with that. <sighs> Tricky. It must have been very flexible in its day. I actually have some silicone lubri lubricant here. This is good for when you've got uh, Particularly tricky plumbing application. Now, incoming power cables over there as well. Just really tricky, there's nowhere to get your fingers in. That's the, that's the issue I have here. That's doing something now. And if I could get a lever on that of something, something like this block of wood. It's pushing. I can't see the thing at all. I think there's little, little clips on the back that are catching on. There's locators cast into the rubber that are caught on the back of it. I'm going to have to take out the screw and try and get it on, lift it apart, get it over it. There we go. If I do, then I'll tighten this up a little bit just to make sure the nuts are on, and then I'll try and twist this around and feed it up. It heading upwards and then I'll try and push this back down again because I felt it move like that. Let's tighten this up. So this should never be for hot water really anyways. 
unless the laundry you're putting in was boiling. It's not going anywhere. Okay. So, subject to all that, it's kind of ready to run now. To go and find some wet laundry. I've got a piece of plastic pipe shoved into the rubber hose, but it's not very tight. I've also got a towel on the ground that I've made soaking wet. Never used one before, and I was told I was told it's better to have it heavy and full and to try and balance it rather than have it not full, so to speak. Empty. So I'll put that in, try and spread it so that it's relatively flat. Put that on top. I don't know how this I think it rises up or whatever. Close that. It says short spin rinse on top. If you zoom in. It says short spin rinse, rinse and spin. And it has like a clock timer. You'll see when it starts to dance. I was told this'll dance. We'll see. It has a decent long cable on it. Plug that in. Okay, it's live. The door is closed. It's vibrating. Got water. I'll put it on for a big spin now. You can see the motor turning there. Seems relatively well balanced there. Water's coming out into that pump. You can see it splashing there a minute ago. Doesn't appear to be any more water coming out of it. I don't know that I can help that along, but I think if I open it. pretty quick. You know, that is actually quite a good deal drier than it started off with. Ah, uh, the noise is the timer still clicking. That's amazing, you know, that just works. That, there was a lot of weight in this before and now there isn't quite so much because it's damp now, but not ringing wet the way it was. I'll wet it up one more time. We'll just try that one more time. So this is now ringing wet. Whoa. Oh, where's my my mat? No, it's not in the bottom. Where did I put it? Is it in the bottom? I've lost my special mat. Yeah, it was in the bottom. All right, back in you go. The only place I've ever seen something like this is in a swimming bath, in a like a private swimming pool, a hotel swimming pool. Sometimes they have these for spinning your laundry, spinning your swimming togs for a minute. I'm gonna turn it on to, I don't understand the rinse thing, because it doesn't have any water coming in.
So it seems like once it starts making that charging noise, it's almost there, or it is there. It seems like it's there now. Just turn it over and put it back in. Let's take a look at how the motor starts up. So I think the motor starts and then there's like a centrifugal clutch or something. Maybe not. A tiny bit more water coming out. Oh no, quite a bit actually. Still shooting out a few blasts of water here. So I'll leave it until I stop seeing water coming out. I wonder if the belt was slipping on it. I think that could be an issue. I also think I have some belting. I have some of this green belt, which I used in a previous video when I was making a belt for a lathe, uh, Clark lathe and there's certainly loads in this to make a couple of belts for this machine if it's the right diameter it might be too small but that I brought this back from China um, a few years ago and I think I have a smaller diameter one as well in orange and I have a feeling the colors mean something but equally you've got to go with what you've got sometimes so it's turned off let's take a look there is, there's a break on that. You can tell straight away whenever I open the top, it's breaking. Um, you hear that wee 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 noise as a break. So reaching in here, that towel has formed a cup shape and crawled up the sides. I don't know if you can see that. That's quite remarkable now. And really, is it even in there for a minute when I turn it on? That's a lot faster than the 10 minute cycle that I've been putting it on with the other washing machine. So I guess the test would be for me to have a load of nappies out of the first washing machine, then to spin them on this and see how much water comes out, if any, and then to spin them again on the 1600 machine. So 800, uh, this machine, and 1600, and see if there's any more coming out. The difference is that uh, the 1600 spin is a 12-minute cycle, where uh, and you can go away for 12 minutes and turn on the kettle or do whatever it is that takes 12 minutes, but then with this one, you've got to be kind of active um although the reality is you probably need to do three blasts so maybe three minute cycles um i think i'm gonna get a better hose for this see what see if i can find a better hose that's a bit longer so that it can hook into a sink and maybe fit that or maybe attach it to the one that's here and maybe put this straight into service that'd be neat you can buy these on ebay they're five or ten quid depending on where you get them from but this one's adequate and i found something interesting on it uh, if i could see it again ddr and that would place it as pre-1989 if that's the case if it does indeed mean deutsches demokratisches republic uh, i have a feeling it does <laughs> because but i wouldn't wouldn't i wonder how something like that came to england um Unless it was old stock, because I think they're like a consum not consumable item, but a reusable or disposable item. So, so in order to get the back on, that hose would have to be manipulated, and it wasn't long enough. So I found another hose that comes out straight. And the way to deal with that is just to drill a hole straight through here. Um, about here, I'd say. slightly oversized so that uh, I can protect around the hose because otherwise you've got sharp metal rubbing on it and I don't have a grommet um, big enough. Do 
do like hole saws, they, they get the job done. If you get the bit of metal to fall out again, so you need to file around that to tidy it up. It's actually quite pretty good on the outside, but uh, we'll tidy it up. particularly precious about this for a number of reasons i didn't pay for it it's already been painted and the parts i i guess you could get them but i'm pretty sure they're unavailable so so there so then let's try with this hose to get it on it should be a matter of pushing it on easily and in this case it should be possible to just put this clip straight back on actually beforehand because we're not trying to rise it over anything Put that on there, wiggle it in, the, uh, the inlet is wet, so maybe it'll go on, maybe it won't, there we go, you can't see that can you? got so much space around it that it's not a big deal anymore i don't even know if i need to protect that but i'll try and get a bit of i think what i could do is get a bit of small hose and form it around it so here is a piece of flexible clear tubing i think if i make it this long it'll be more than enough to cut it off there i think this came from a power washer uh, inlet for The detergent on a power washer. Be careful because uh, if you go straight through your hand, doing it like this. So I'm trying to cut a straight line, and it's you know, ish. Right. So will that wrap around? It will, I think. Let's see if I can get it in here and then trim it to length in situ. should just be a matter now of attaching this it's easier said than done of course it's nice and sharp that on there that'll that'll protect it a bit won't do much for it i could actually put a grommet in there if i wanted above but i don't even know if i will because you'd struggle to get your finger in and there's nothing to point it at anyways and it's at the back of the machine um i think that's quite neat you could glue it on with a bit of silicone perhaps but uh well i won't <laughs> so there okay that's a good job i'll put it back together and uh, we'll bring it down to the cellar and see if it works in situ Okay, so here's the spinner. It's in situ now in a place where I might use it. It's got a load of laundry beside, nappies in this case. So I'm going to put them in and try and wring out some of the water. And I've got the bowl up here beside me. If you can see, you can't see it yet, but you'll see it in a minute. In fact, let's do it like this. There you go. So the bowl's here, the nappies are on the floor and the spinner is here. I'm just putting nappies in, kind of ad hoc. I have to sort it out a little bit because there's other things in with them. So let's put it 
it in like that. Lay it flattish on top. Put in that rubber mat thing. Close it and turn it on. Sound like it's spinning yet. But it's spinning all right. No water came out on that spin. So this was on an 800 spin and I'm moving these from here into the washing machine to give them a 1600 spin to see if it makes any difference. Go in two loads at night. Let's put it in like that. Kind of chance on it here. I'm gonna say that that's as done as it's gonna be because the water stopped pumping out of it. And I'll try the other ones again. I think it was going a bit faster that time or, well, it was certainly doing something bit better that time 
and I also think I put in a bit more a bit more laundry into it that time as well. Let's see. Right, it's empty again. And put the original batch back in, which does feel a little bit damper to me. Taking this back out of the washing machine as you've just seen. Let's put this in. Mat on. Bring it up to spin. For that kind of laundry's all crept up the sides and stuck on properly which is kind of neat so what I'll do is I'll put it into this give it a 1600 spin which is a 12 minute cycle and we'll see if it gets any more moisture out so we'll, we'll account for what's come out so far um, okay so that's off now need to turn it back on there I could have just waited for the timer let's put these nappies back in here close this door this is the WFP 3300 and it was refurbed in a couple of other videos and it works really really well so a jug here for measuring Here's what's come out so far, and I'm not too concerned about the colour of this liquid because it's come out of that spinner, which may or may not be clean. So it's gotten the best part of 460, 470 mil. It looks gross, but uh, I'm sure that's more to do with the spinner than to do with the laundry, because normally that water comes out quite clean. So 470, and now we'll switch this hose in here. We'll see if on a 1600 spin any more comes out. I'll not watch this, but uh, so it does an initial shot of water. So I'll pour that out. And that's there. Okay. It's pumping and then it'll start to spin. One thing I haven't addressed in this video so far is that I haven't replaced the belts. I talked about it and I haven't done it. I'm not convinced I need to because it's just squeezed the guts of half a liter out of out of that wash. And I would suspect that because I've moved it and had it lying over, it may well not have any water in it. So it might it might already have two or three hundred milliliters of water in it. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see if anything comes out of this. I'll come back in 11 minutes and have a look. So 12 minutes has passed. I can't tell if there's any difference. We'll check the water in a minute. 
we will find out because that will be the test okay that's that bit done so there is oh there's not much actually much at all so for what are we call it 460 something like that and here is not even a hundred i would say not even a hundred i think i'm quite right there yeah hardly worth doing that spin so what does that tell me what does that tell me that tells me that that spin dryer is actually quite good it is the equivalent i would say of this i think what's happened is there's a a sump in here that the pump pumps from and because I moved it and would have had it drained out whenever I was doing that hose it probably has a bit of water in it 100 mil or something I presume and uh, that's not come out so I think it's actually pretty good I realized as well you can pop this out and that needs a good clean as well so I'll do that off camera Get the lint out of here you see because of the shape of it it catches all the dirt it's just a design feature of a top loading machine like this you can see in beside and that's the thing there it's all it's, it's actually all moist in there there's a rubber bead around the edge there it must stop it slapping when it's turning oh the brake the brake's on at the moment that's why it's um, hard to turn whenever the lid is open of course because there's a brake yeah cool right um what more to say it seems to be comparable to the washing machine takes two loads took about four or five minutes to spin them got the same amount of water out the issue is i guess that you have to load it and unload it this probably uses more energy because it's on for longer and it's you're turning a bigger thing and all that hard to say this will be a 300 watt motor and it'll have associated electronics that take a few watts. This has just got the motor and the pump. It's only it's actually it's only got one motor driving everything. And I think it was 210 watts, the hot point 1012, if I remember. So pretty cool actually. I'm gonna try and fit that in between the tumble dryer, it's blocking this door, the hot point, the Bosch two other boshes what i'm thinking is this bosch here is going to go into daily service over here and i'll keep the nappy machine and i'll just put this machine just adjacent to the stone sink there because the 2000 really it doesn't it's not doesn't doesn't do very much i'd rather have the wfk there wfk is in the other cellar uh, just waiting for for its time to come Right, questions or comments, leave them below. Great to see this old hot point back in, back in business. That's great news. Thanks for watching. See you later.